Good morning. Welcome to yet another episode of The Angry Astronaut. So in a new location just outside of Plymouth, apparently, and still waiting on this elusive Virgin Orbit launch. In the meantime, what's been going on with Blue Origin? But more importantly, what's been going on with my channel? 90,000 subscribers. <laughs> I couldn't be more thrilled. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for making that happen. I've actually added nearly 100 more subscribers since I hit that 90K less than two days ago. So on our way down the home stretch, and I know we have that other 10,000 out there. As a matter of fact, a video I just released a couple of days ago with just under 20,000 subscribers, over 5,000 of those are not subscribers, or rather 20,000 views, about 5,000 are not subscribers. That being the case, I know you guys are out there. I know we can get another 10K. Let's do it. Back to Blue Origin. So, I'm New Shepard. There is, you know, that failed launch that took place, what apparently was a successful display of their uh, abort system, although there's still some question about the G-forces uh, that would have been experienced by any passengers on board. So, investigation going on there. Not really sure when they're going to launch New Shepard again, but when it comes right down to it, New Shepard shouldn't even be a big part of the conversation. The big part of the conversation is, of course, New Glenn. What the hell is going on with New Glenn? Well, there was one recent development. The U.S. military has now granted Blue Origin the right to bid on military contracts, that sort of thing, uh, you know, as, as an official vendor, I guess. But they're not receiving any money from the military to develop New Glenn any further. So still doesn't seem to be a great deal of confidence in that rocket. And honestly, there's a very good reason. You know, I sort of misspoke at the beginning of the video. There is a reason to be excited about New Shepard because when I hit 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to have my own New Shepard launch. That's right. This is a cool little toy if you have the right things planned for it. And yeah, we're going to see just how far I can get this thing off the ground and how good the abort system really works. And I'll tell you something, if I was a Blue Origin fan, I would be even more frustrated with the company because I've been stuck watching this damn animation over and over and over again for years. Indeed, even before I started my channel, this animation had been prowling the internet for some time. And at this point, we don't even know if New Glenn is going to look like this or function like this. We do know that that the barge that it's going to be landing on is different than the one that's depicted here. And also, there's another thing about New Glenn that's a bit disturbing. It's actual capabilities and just how competitive is it really going to be when it finally gets into service. But of course, there's another problem that's a lot more obvious. This rocket is not even close to getting off the ground yet. <laughs> really, we don't even have a functional pathfinder at this point, or at least Blue Origin hasn't shown us one. Yes, we've seen a dummy version with a theoretical mass that's the same as a fully loaded rocket, but it doesn't have even Pathfinder engines on it. The BE-4s that have been available to Blue Origin have all gone to ULA because ULA actually has a rocket that's going to be launching in the next couple of months. And speaking of 
of ULA, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that Vulcan is actually going to be a far more competitive rocket than New Glenn will ever be. But why is this the case? I mean, New Glenn has a 7 meter fairing and a payload capacity of 45 metric tons to low Earth orbit. That's much better than Vulcan, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, I have to admit, I am a little skeptical of these numbers, and I'll tell you why. The seven BE-4 engines that provide the primary thrust on the first stage deliver less than 4 million pounds of thrust. Now think about that for a moment. That means that Blue Origin would have us believe that a reusable first stage with less than 25% of the thrust of Starship is going to be able to deliver nearly 50% of Starship's payload. Oh yeah, and it's also going to have enough fuel left over to land the booster. Those numbers just don't add up, and actually if you dive deep into the payload user's guide for New Glenn, you will see that the long-term goal is to deliver 45 tons to low Earth orbit. They don't actually guarantee that capability, and you can also see just how much their capability drops off once they get to geosynchronous transfer orbit. The total mass that New Glenn can deliver to GTO is only 13 tons, or less than 29% of what they say they can deliver to low Earth orbit. Vulcan does not drop off this precipitously at all. Let's do a head-to-head -head comparison between Vulcan's capabilities and New Glenn's, at least as far as advertised. And by the way, ULA provides much much more comprehensive information on their rocket's capability. They say how much the rock can, rocket rather can deliver to low Earth orbit, to GTO, to geosynchronous orbit, to translunar injection orbit, all kinds of different alternatives, whereas Blue Origin only gives us two. And they also don't explain whether or not these payload capabilities reflect reusability or expending the rocket. But let's just for a moment assume that the advertised payloads are accurate and let's have a look at both rockets' capabilities. And interestingly enough, both of them are going to be launching Project Kuiper. So the Vulcan Centaur with six solid rocket boosters, yes, that's a lot, but still the maximum capacity of the Centaur can deliver 27.2 metric tons up to low Earth orbit, as opposed to 45 for New Glenn. Once again, I seriously question this because the Vulcan Centaur with X six SRBs rather has actually a bit more thrust than New Glenn does, and also it's not keeping propellant in reserve to land the first stage. But let's just assume that it's accurate somehow, and then move on to GTO. At GTO, the Vulcan immediately takes the lead with 14.5 metric tons as opposed to 13 for New Glenn. You see capabilities dropping off radically for New Glenn the higher the orbit is, and my suspicion is those differences are going to get even more pronounced once you get up to geosynchronous orbit or translunar injection. And in case you're interested, Vulcan Centaur can deliver 11.5 tons to TLI, so in other words, only 1.5 tons less than New Glenn to the moon as opposed to GTO, and then finally 6.5 tons to geosynchronous orbit, and once again, we really don't know what New Glenn's going to be capable of. However, it does have one clear advantage. The second stage of New Glenn is powered by BE-3 engines, which are far more powerful than the Aerojet Rocketdyne RL-10s on the Vulcan Centaur. But as you can see from the payload capabilities, it does not appear that this superiority gives any sort of advantage to New Glenn given all the drawbacks it has. First of all, it doesn't get to use all of its fuel on ascent. It has to keep fuel in reserve to land. Secondly, it's pushing a hell of a lot more mass. We're talking a 7 meter fairing as opposed to 5.4. It's just a much bigger rocket overall. So all of these disadvantages really make New Glenn no more capable than Vulcan Centaur. As a matter of fact, in higher orbits, it's even less capable. 
So a lot of the problems that I've been talking about with Starship, that is to say it can't really carry a whole lot of mass beyond low Earth orbit without refueling simply because it's such a massive rocket, this applies to New Glenn as well. As a matter of fact, it's an even bigger problem because New Glenn doesn't have anywhere near the thrust that Starship does. Once again, I really doubt that New Glenn is ever going to be able to push almost 50% of Starship's mass into low Earth orbit with just seven BE-4 engines. The numbers don't add up. And even worse, when we're talking about the most important long-term use for New Glenn, that is to say Project Kuiper, the numbers don't support the Blue Origin flagship rocket either. Think about it for a moment. Vulcan Centaur only has two BE-4 engines that Blue Origin needs to manufacture before it can head to orbit whereas New Glenn requires seven. That means that you need to manufacture three and a half times as many engines to send just a few more Kuiper satellites into orbit than Vulcan's capable of. If you want to get Kuiper deployed as rapidly as possible, you want to just keep churning out BE-4 after BE-4 engine for Vulcan Centaur, not for New Glenn. But wait a minute, wait a minute, you Blue Origin hater, you. The New Glenn is a reusable rocket. Vulcan is not. So you're going to burn through those BE-4 engines so much faster with Vulcan than you're going to use them for New Glenn, right? Well, there's a couple of problems with that argument as well. First of all, we really don't know what New Glenn's capabilities are going to be if you have to keep fuel in reserve to land the booster, but more importantly, ULA is delivering, or rather developing, smart reusability for the BE-4 engines as well. That's one of the main reasons that they went with this solution, is because these engines can be reused. By the time New Glenn finally comes into service sometime in 2024, ULA is planning to have a smart reusability solution in place for the BE-4. And by the way, not using parafoil recovery anymore, just an inflatable heat shield, very similar to lofted, that will land in the ocean and then the engines can be recovered. And there are so many applications for Vulcan Centaur that, of course, New Glenn theoretically has as well, but all of these capabilities are going to come into existence faster than Blue Origin can develop their flagship rocket. As a matter of fact, New Glenn is a strange concept for a flagship rocket anyway. In a time when a 5 meter fairing and 20 to 25 tons can easily take care of the needs of the vast majority of the customers that are out there right now, the only thing you really need a 7 meter fairing for is to deploy a massive number of satellites, perhaps like Kuiper. But as we have just seen, Vulcan Centaur can easily handle the needs of Kuiper with a fraction of the engine. So even for that purpose, New Glenn doesn't really fit the bill very well. And given the fact that it actually has less flexibility when we're talking about orbital configurations than Vulcan or some of its other competitors like Falcon Heavy or even Falcon 9, this rocket has a very limited range of applications. However, it could be modified if you add a third stage. And in a recent statement, Tori Bruno said that New Glenn will almost certainly need a third stage to be competitive, and although this might change the game quite a bit, Blue Origin is nowhere near to deploying a third stage for New Glenn, let alone the basic rocket. Unlike Starship, which has obvious applications for Starlink version 2 and also its future lunar missions, New Glenn is kind of a super rocket without a mission. And not only that, of course, it's still inching its way towards the finish line. The footage you're watching here is from 2019. Now, Blue Origin is a very opaque organization, and for all we know, the rocket could be almost ready to go and very mature by this point but we've been watching footage like this for an extremely long period of time. This fairing has been on display now for three damn years. Where is the completed article, or at least a completed Pathfinder? Thus far, we haven't seen anything
anything like that at the Cape. Instead, what we've seen are new manufacturing facilities, primarily for the BE-4, which in my opinion is going to be the main focus of Blue Origin's business for some time to come. That engine, assuming that it works well, it's going to be a major source of revenue for this company. But New Glenn? Still not looking very promising. And we have this advanced and very impressive mission control center for Blue Origin and New Glen. This is the saddest thing of all. I mean, look at this thing. It's beautiful, and yet it doesn't have a rocket. And it's not going to have a rocket in 2023, and it will be lucky to have a rocket in 2024 to actually control. Now, clearly this isn't going to happen, but in my opinion, Blue Origin should seriously consider abandoning this project. New Glen is kind of a dead-end project until it actually has a third stage anyway, so perhaps they should keep working on it until they can actually produce a three-stage New Glen, because in my opinion, this is the only way this thing is going to be really competitive, and in the meantime, they should focus on the BE-4 and whatever money they can scrape together with New Shepard. It's an unfortunate and kind of bleak looking future, one that isn't going to happen by the way because the company's founder is doggedly determined to be relevant in the future, but I have a hard time understanding how they're going to achieve any kind of relevance with New Glenn. Please smash that like, please hit that subscribe. We are on the home stretch now to 100k. I can't wait for us to get there. Thanks so much for your support. And as always, stay angry about space. <laughs>